I love the backfire nice. Welcome back to the crew two. Today's video, we're taking a little bit of a different tone. We're jumping into a race because this is going to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about in a very meaningful Let's way. What you got under that hood. Also, I like that they kind of interact every now and again. It seems to be like once every 20 races. I very quickly bought the Skyline and I wanted to max it out as quickly as possible because that's, that's my baby, right? I, I want to try and grind out as much as I can. Just avoid the jump and, you know, jump from the curb. Don't mind me. This game fixes so many things that were wrong with the crew one. It changes the, the atmosphere of it. It makes it much more like welcoming for those that don't want it, the nitty gritty. Oh, my brother killed and now I need to go in revenge. It adds the different disciplines, the planes, the boats. It adds so many different varieties of vehicles, including the helicopters and the hovercraft. And opens potential for possible other types of vehicles to be put into the game in the future because in the last game i was how we were like really really kind with adding things for free they had a whole graphics overhaul for the last game for example they've added houses they've added tuning options for the game they've added the performance upgrade system and made it well overall improved and made it much more accessible but at the same time having that nice layer there for those that want to progress. All of my videos and talking about the game, for the most part, have been positive. Like 99% of it has been positive. But now we're gonna talk about something that kind of literally frustrates me. We're gonna finish this event and it's gonna give us the introduction as to what the problem is. Now, I just got 21,000 bucks. Normally it would be 19, it's on hard. Normally it would be 15 if you're on easy. I got some nice parts. Bang, bang, bang. Super cool system. I like it a lot. Does it better than Need for Speed for the most part? The amazing map I didn't even mention, for example. <laughs> it's just incredible. It's, I, I've not been up here yet in this version. And I can't wait to properly go around and explore and do more challenges and stuff. But anyway, wrong menu. In the pause menu, you will see that my car is 280 out of 280. It is the maximum level 660 horsepower, whatever, 200, it's, it's a fast car, it's great. Uh, this is a max level car, and you're like, wow, you've done, you've maxed it out already, well done, I'm, I'm proud of you, thank you. All the parts are completely, like, done up, I have quite a few books upgrades, I've been grinding through the parts as well to get the books upgrades. This part is not purple, but I do have a purple part, I just haven't put it on because I want the books upgrade. I have so many parts at 280 for each individual option. And how have I done that? Well, in the game, the way it works is once you have a 280 part, pretty much every part after that is going to be 280. There's no point in giving you weaker parts. It's a similar system to how Need for Speed did it, but it doesn't give you worse parts. Which, in, you know, first glance is like, okay, that's that's better, right? But when you take into consideration, let's go into the performance of this, for example. I don't have, I didn't have any 280 parts on this until I put some on. But the, the, reason, the reason I put them on is because the parts are shareable between cars. I can, once I max out one car, I can put 280 parts across the board. You're like, okay, right? So you grind out one car, that means you can upgrade all your cars instantly. Is that an issue? Um, yes and no. I mean, for some people, that's what they want to do. But for some people, for the people that played the crew for one, two years, it's a problem. In the crew one, I didn't max out my cars within three hours which is what i did in this game and i have some stats to show you it's about three hours is what i estimate if we go over to stats these stats are super super cool by the way uh, it tells you so much information it shows you how much you've used for free driving 13 hours in cars and one hour is in off-road you get the idea it gives you cool, cool stats total earned in races is 1200 but sorry 1.2 million bucks and uh, it shows you how many you made from skills that kind of thing four hours 14 minutes spent in street racing to make 1.2 million books now does that sound good sure i mean it sounds like a decent progression path one point yeah, i could buy one hypercar one very good hypercar for four hours of driving right i mean i could i could buy multiple though because you're not keeping in mind that when the game comes out this is the first tier event we've only been playing the first tier of events and there's supposed to be like 100 and 200 and something events in the game so later on you know for a fact we're gonna get more money from events right that just makes sense three hours to max out a car and currently about four hours to buy the best vehicles in the game that's where we have a bit of a problem now granted you can only swap parts between the same spec of vehicles so street racing can do street racing if you go to for example uh the touring cars 
you have to get them from 260 to 320, and you have to do it all over again. But then once you've one of them, you can do all of them. It's three hours to max out one car, and then about two minutes to max out the rest of them. The reason I bring this is because I adore this game. I adore absolutely everything about this game. It does things so much better than the competition. It is definitely the most full packaged racing game we've had in such a long time. But I needed to point this out because it's bugging me. I mean, the houses stuff, I wanted the ability to upgrade houses over time. That's such a small cosmetic thing. It doesn't matter necessarily too much. I would love to see it in the future. I'd love to see it in, you know, at some point soon. But I thought I should mention this because we know for a fact that Ivory Tower in the past has done amazing when it comes to supporting the game post-launch and stuff. And this is my idea that I have. I totally understand as to why they've done this. They want to make it accessible. I reckon later in the game we could earn 25, 35, 45,000 a race and a two minute race. And you know, that would, that would be enough to buy a hypercar in an hour, 30 minutes eventually. You know, you put the books upgrades on, it's going to take you no time whatsoever. I feel like they've catered to the casual, which I totally get because the last game was a little bit daunting jumping into. There was a lot of systems in place and stuff. And it's similar to the new Pokemon game. They're, they're stripping it down to the bare bones of catching Pokemon battling trainers. It brings in a lot more people. It, it makes it more accessible, but those people aren't the people that are going to be sticking around, and those people won't be the people maxing out their cars anyway. How I feel is maybe they should add, as a solution, 20 more levels per class in the future, or maybe soon, like very soon. Make it so that it's much harder to get those parts, because as you get towards level 280, one of the three parts you get is usually under leveled. That's the type of thing I want to see. I want to see that. I want to get worse parts towards the end. Once I've beat the game, make this a post completion of the game thing in where you can go up 20 more levels. Doesn't affect your performance massively. You get like five, 10 more miles an hour, if you will. But it gives us something to do. The people that are going to be playing for one, two years. Yes, there's going to be extra content added to the game. Oh, you just play game all day, so you don't know. I hate this argument. In that I don't, I, I get to spend the all day playing games. Sure, I get to. But we don't understand there's a difference between playing games and recording games. There's a very big difference. I don't just necessarily jump in and I can't just play and grind and, be, and have people watch. That's not how it works. I come up with challenges and, and exploration and on a feature, featuring like features that you haven't seen before. And yeah, I, I'm the grinding type. I love to play GTA Online just to grind money. I love to play those types of games where it takes a long time to get the things I want. It makes it more rewarding for me. It makes me like my cars more. And that's something that the Crew 1 did well, and they've taken that. And that's what you have to understand. To max out all types of vehicles, it's going to take you a day playtime, which isn't very long. The lack of PvP didn't bother me at the beginning, but PvP would have been... Nice. And if they did this extra parts idea that I said, if they did PvP in the future, if PvP is actually in it or they do it in the future, I'm not exactly sure about the like how that works right now, they could just split the PvP lobbies. And if you really want to, you can go in the higher end ones or the lower end ones and stick with those. You don't have any massive advantage over any of the people. The leaderboards could be split. You know, that you could do things like that to make it I, like, we wouldn't mind, I don't think. The crew is meant to be a car PG, a proper, full-on car PG. And I feel like now it's become, I say this, the middleman of Need for Speed and Forza, because that's what it is. It's a very middleman now, but it's obviously got a lot more content than both of them. But in the terms of progression, it's in the middle now. And it was, in my opinion, the best of it. I wanted to make this video just to see what you guys thought. I know there's going to be a bunch of people that still disagree with me even though i'm saying don't make it more difficult for people that's not what i'm asking i'm saying for those that want it more difficult make it more difficult no events should recommend these new higher levels that i'm suggesting you know no no online lockout they shouldn't be locked out of this kind of stuff you know that there's just so much you've got to consider i'm not a developer i don't know how it works i don't know if they could test it i don't know if they could even you know justify doing something like this because of a Let's be honest, most of the game's money comes from the beginning of the launch, but when it comes to DLC and stuff, maybe the first DLC should be something for the hardcore, because let's face it, that's who is going to be playing the game the most in 6, 12 months' time. But that's, as I said, my opinion on it. 
I wanted to make this video to ask you guys if you have the same opinion or if you differ. I know that there's going to be people that 100% whole, wholeheartedly disagree and want to max out cars in 50, like in 10, 15 minutes. But I'm not trying to take that away from you. That's what you need to understand. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. As I said, please, it would help me out a bunch. And uh, spread awareness of this to, you know, tweet it to Ivory Tower. Tweet it to uh, the crew Twitter. It would help me out a bunch. And uh, yeah, be sure to smash like if you want to see more videos like this. I like kind of discussing these topics for matters that matter to me a lot. Because racing games are a dying breed. And those games in the past that used to be more difficult are definitely pretty much dead now. Need for Speed, for example, had nice, uh, a nice update for those that wanted easiness into the game. But by the time they released the update, the people that were in the game were the hardcore. Those that were going to play two or three hours a day. Two or three hours a day, you know, a couple times a week to me is anyone that's playing the game more than most. See what I mean? Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be a little bit more lighthearted, I promise. <laughs> I, this is, I, I needed to get this out. Definitely doesn't turn me off of the game. Like, obviously, I, I love everything about this game. It just bothers me as a hardcore fan. Until next time, guys. Peace.